Welcome to a quick run through of version 3 of BuildSoft Takeoff 2 or BT2. We'll start at the job manager screen. At the job manager screen you can create new projects and new jobs. For example if I click the new project button you can create folder names for a group of jobs. For example we might have residential as a project name and then underneath the residential project we can have the residential jobs that we are working on. You can see here we've created a project called residential which if I open up we have a job underneath it. You can have as many jobs as you like within a project. You can move jobs between projects by opening another project, clicking on this arrow, dragging and dropping the job into another project. I'll just click and drag that back down to the residential project to show you the ease that you can move jobs around. I can rename it at any stage. I can insert information such as what type of job it is. I can insert site address and customer information also. All this information here on the right hand side is optional and doesn't have to be completed to continue working on the job. To open a job we can right click on it and select open or simply double click on the job. When we do that it will open us into the estimate sheet and the viewport screen. Now, As you can see this is broken into two sections. On the left is the estimate sheet where we can insert information such as trade names, headings and item descriptions. And on the right in the viewport is where we can insert electronic plans such as PDF files, CAD files and other image types. I'll start over here on the left though and show you that we can insert information such as headings or trades. Let's start with say preliminaries. And I'll nominate that that's a heading by clicking on this button. I'll then insert an item underneath that, let's say site establishment. I can insert straight into the quantity cell a value, I can change a unit to whatever I like and insert a rate. And the software will just multiply quantity by rate to give us a total on the right hand side. If I create another heading or trade, let's say concrete and click heading you'll see that that'll go in as a subheading of preliminaries. We can make that a main heading by clicking this unindent button to bring it back to make it in this case heading 2 or trade 2 in the estimate sheet. I can create a subheading of concrete by inserting a description and clicking heading and then I could create an item by inserting the description and then moving to the quantity cell. In the quantity cell you can type formulas in, for example we might have an area that's 8 times 5 to give us 40 square metres, or if I click in this result drop down column and nominate volume, I could have inserted a quantity such as 8 times 5 being the area times 0.1 to say 100 mil thick slab. And you'll note when you type a formula in the value appears in pink to dominate that you've put a formula into that cell. When you create an item and highlight or put your cursor in the quantity cell, you also have access to what's called a calculation sheet in this bottom window. This is where you can break down a quantity into its individual dimensions. For example, we might have a main slab, that's an area of 8 by 5 at 100 mil deep. And the factor column here can be used to say, well, there might be two areas of that length and width. I'll insert another entry of say 4 metres by 5.5 and, and with a different thickness and you'll see the total of these calculations appear in the bottom here, in this case 11.3 and this value is transferred up into the estimate sheet and it appears in blue and blue informs you that if you put your cursor on that cell you can see the calculation in this bottom window. You can also enter in deductions for example, there might be a void in the concrete, 2 metres by 2.5 at 100 mil deep. And I can nominate in this is deduction column by ticking it that that's a deduction. So we now have 10.8 cubes. We can control here whether we want to report an exact quantity into the estimate. Or in this case, I might say let's round that up. And it rounds it up 
to 11 cubic meters. The factor column can also be handy if you want to add in things such as wastage. For example, if I put in a factor of 1.1 and 2.1 on this item, that's allowed an extra 10% wastage on our calculation. So we now have a cubic meter calculation of 12. So 11.53 includes our wastage factors and also rounds up to the next unit. That's all manual input. If you want to take off quantities from plans, you can insert a plan into this viewport and then extract quantities from it. So what I'll do, I'll create another item, let's say 40 MPA concrete, and I'll nominate that I want a volume calculation from the plan. I'll put in concrete finish as a second item and nominate that I want that to be an area. And I'll insert edge boards as a third item and nominate length. So you can see the unit types for these items in our cubic meter, square meter and lineal meter. Remembering you can change the units at any stage to your preferred option. Now to insert a plan into the program you can either click the insert plan button here in the viewport or the insert button up on the ribbon. If I click insert it will bring up the normal Windows Explorer browser in this case, it's defaulted to a file or a folder where I have some plans saved. If I click on this drop down arrow, you can see that it supports file types such as bitmap, JPEG, PNG, but also PDF and your CAD files, BWG and BXF file formats. If I select the PDF file and click open, a little preview screen will appear and this is handy if you had a multi-page PDF you could select which pages you want to import into the program you can have multiple plans open in the viewport by just opening them as you need them via the insert button if I select import now before I can do anything with this plan I need to give it a scale or scale it off so in other words I have to insert a dimension off the plan for it to calibrate the plan to provide accurate quantities. But before I do that, you'll notice here we have an option where we can rotate the plan to the view that you prefer. So you can rotate left or right, or even one degree at a time, if need be. I can use this zoom window button to zoom in on a section of the plan. In this case, what I'll do, I'll tell the software that from this point, and I'm just left clicking to this point, left clicking again is 4.32 meters or 4320 millimeters always insert a dimension in millimeters once you've inserted that dimension click OK at the bottom and the software now knows that that dimension is 4.3 meters and it can start calculating quantities from this plan so what I can do is either highlight one item and create a shape which will then transfer the quantity back into the quantity cell or you can highlight multiple items for example if I hold my control key down you can tag these three items or if you hold the shift key down you can tag a range of items and they're tagged when they are tagged they appear in green up the top here I can nominate which color that I want to plot with I can nominate whether I want the shape to be just an outline with no fill or a transparent uh, shade color or a solid shade color. We can also nominate the line style we want to plot with and the size or thickness of the line we wish to plot with. I'll zoom in on a section of the plan and what I'll do I'll just quickly trace around the perimeter of this building. So I've just left clicked there. I'll zoom in on this section of the plan. So what you can do with your mouse button is zoom in and out by scrolling in and out on a section of the plan and you can also pan around the plan by clicking and holding the middle mouse button down the scroll button and moving left or right up or down so left clicking you'll notice my the lines that I'm plotting they're snapping to a 15 degree increment there is an option up on the ribbon called ortho which if you turn on means that the lines will be nice and straight as you plot them. If I turn the ortho off, it means a line can go at any degree angle. 
and with the ortho on, by default it snaps to 15 degree increments. You can change that snap angle if you need to. I'll continue around the perimeter of the building. Now when you get back to the original point, if it's an area shape, you can just simply right click and the line, line will join back to the original point or you can put your cursor over the original point and a little square will appear and if you do a left click then it will close the shape in this case it's shaded it in with a transparent color and what it's been able to do if we look on the left hand side is give us dimensions for each of these items so the perimeter so nominated length of this shape is 90.31 meters remember that you can round up the quantity if you want to so 91 lineal meters the area of that shape is 293 square meters and it's also been able to give us a volume calculation so what you can do if you highlight the subtotal in the calc sheet on the right hand side here I've preset that every time I plot a volume shape use a depth or a thickness of 125 mil I can change that by clicking in that cell, let's say I'll change it to 100 mil, which has changed my volume to 29.3. So at any stage you can adjust this depth value to give you the adjusted calculation. If you want to change these default settings, up under the job menu, click options, and you can go to dimensions tab and adjust this thickness. For example, I also have here a default wall height of 2700 for each time I plot a wall. So you can set default settings, but you can also change these values as you create shapes as well. I'll click OK, which will take me back into the estimate sheet. Remembering once again, you can use the factor column in the calc sheet to insert things like wastage factors. And we might say, let's round that up. So that's showing you how you can get one shape to give you multiple quantities in your estimate sheet. I'll create another trade now, let's say brickwork, and a nominate heading, and I'll unindent that to make that a main heading, in this case trade 3. I'll create an item called external bricks, and I'll show you now how you can use an existing shape in the viewport to calculate a quantity for a new item. So by default, the software is in polyline mode, which means it's ready for you to plot shapes. If I select this button at the top, which is simply called select, and move my cursor over an existing shape in the viewport, you'll see it'll change color to tell you that it's found the shape. And if I now click down with my mouse, left mouse button, drag and drop that over into the quantity cell against the external bricks, the software tells me that there's a vertical area of 268 square meters there. And the way it's been able to calculate that is the perimeter of the building, which was around 91 lineal meters, times by the default wall height, which was 2700, plus our wastage factor of 0.1 or 10%, gives us an area of 268. If I wanted the exact brickwork quantity, I could just change the factor back to 1. So it tells us there'd be about 243 square metres there based on all these walls being 2700 high multiplied by the perimeter of the building. Now if you want to adjust the heights of walls, you just click on the subtotal here and it shows you over in this details pane each individual wall that we've plotted. For example, if my cursor's on line 1 now, it's highlighted in green at the top. So the area for that wall is 54 square metres. The area for line 6 is 13 square metres. So you can see there we've got 0.1 and 0.2, which is height 1 and height 2. So this is where it allows you to create things such as raking walls. For example, at the height 1 end, it might rake up to 3 metres. Or at both ends, it might be 3 metres high. And by us inserting those new height values, it adjusts the area for that wall and the overall area for the bricks. Now this is done in 2D at the moment. It's handy to click on the 3D view if you are making these adjustments. Because this will show you the PDF file in a 3D view. So you can see there that wall is now 300mm higher than the other walls on the plan. 
So if this was, as I mentioned before, a raking wall, I could insert height at one end. You can see it's created that rake there. Or if this wall then raked up to that value, I could highlight line six, sorry, line five in this case. We have height one and height two. So the height two value on line five, three and a half meters to complete that rake wall there. And obviously the area now is 247 square meters. You can manually insert down into the calc sheet entries such as if you wanted to duct out windows. There might be a window that's 1.8 by 1.2 and there might be say six of them on the perimeter of this building and I can tick here to nominate that's a deduction. So now the area of brickworks 234 square meters. And so that's some basic functionality that you can get from the viewport and taking off shapes from plans. You can also insert rates here and build up composite rates. So for example, let's say 280 cubes for the 32 MPA concrete. So you can see now we have a total of concrete for 3360 to go with our total $1,500 for prelims and our total for the job at the moment appears here. You can also build up composite rates. If you remember, we highlighted before in the quantity cell, you could do calc sheets entries. If you put your cursor in the rate column, you can also build up composite rates at the bottom. An example like that might be, if we need to work out what's the total dollar per cubic meter, we could insert into the rate sheet or supply of concrete, one cubic meter is $180, and labor to four, we might charge $100 a cube. We may also want to allow for delivery one cube might be three dollars fifty so what we've done is build up a composite rate so you can see the total of this sheet is 283 dollars fifty which is then transferred into the rate column to give us our budget for that item and we can see a running cost as we put this information together if you want to apply a markup to all these items you can highlight all of the items and insert into the markup column the value you wish to mark up by. You can see the 10% is now being spread across all those items. At any stage, you can print out what's in the viewport or what's in your estimate sheet by going to the data tab, hit the trade report button. This will bring up a print preview by default of the trade breakup or your estimate breakdown. Note down here, you can click on this drop down arrow and select other reports. For example, we might want, might want to present this to a client, so we want to hide our markups. So if I click markups applied, our markup column is then removed and our 10% is spread into the rate to factor in or hide our markups. You can also print a report with all the rates stripped. So in other words, just descriptions and quantities or you can print just a heading summary, which in this case will just tell us what prelims is 1650, concrete is that value, and an overall total for the job. And that'll include your markups as well. You can add logos to the reports. You can change the names of reports. You've got an option down here whether you want to include GST or not on your reports. You can print then hard copies of the report, or you can click this export button to dump the information out to an Excel, PDF, or a Word document. And another very handy tool on this data ribbon is this Excel button. If you click on this button, the software will quickly dump this information out to an Excel spreadsheet for you, and it will also carry through the formulas. So if you want to adjust the value in the spreadsheet, you can make that adjustment, which will update the total and update the overall total for the job. That just gives a basic run through of some of the simple functions within the B22 program. Some more advanced tutorials will be made available in other sessions. Thank you.